Congress is back in session. Congress is back in session. <laughs> Let the trumpets blare and the huzzahs sound in unison. All's well inside the Beltway. And if you're falling for that, we need to have a discussion about reality. Uh, the gentlemen, ladies, indeed, back. The president's back at work. Whether anything will get done is always another story. Welcome back from inside that Beltway. Newsmax DC correspondent, man about town, bon vivant, John Gizzi, joins us today. Just back fresh from the White House, young man. Welcome in. And uh, uh, by the way, did you have a nice Fourth of July? I had a very happy Fourth, and then I went to watch our Nats beat the Chicago Cubs 13 to nothing Saturday. Uh, it doesn't get any better than that. As long as you don't play my Red Sox, as long as you don't beat my Red Sox, everything's okay. We'll, we'll take it from Stay there. Stay on good terms. All right. Uh, well, let's see. The president is back. Uh, I know you're just back from the White House, and uh, I'm certain that the questions about his trip to Texas never once talked about the fact that he's not actually going to go to the border. <laughs> uh, that dominated the lion's share of the questions at the White House. When you subtract the questions about the revelations of greater uh, eavesdropping in Germany, uh, it was pretty much an immigration day or border day. Uh, the president will be going to Texas exclusively to raise money for Democratic candidates. But repeatedly he was asked, or his spokesman Josh Earnest was asked, why not just hop a flight over and see the situation on the border firsthand? My colleague George Condon of National Journal said, isn't the president worried about the optics of this? In other words, that he's in the state for political purposes, but he can't go to the border where the news is being dominated by talk of people coming over illegally, children being separated from their parents and the like. And Josh Earnest said that the president doesn't need to know because he's been apprised of the situation. As one who covered President Bush in 2005 during Katrina and heard all the criticism that he wasn't on the ground in time and still remembers the photo of him looking down from Air Force One, I'd say optics are a pretty important situation for a president, particularly when it's a crisis. It seems as if now we have one of those brand new phrases that's going to walk into uh, the White House's answering of a lot of things. John, the optics of the instance. I, I will tell you that while before you came on, I was reading the stories and following them during the day, uh, during the day rather, and I saw that they weren't worried about the optics. And I'm thinking, oh, marvelous. Now we, we basically have another excuse here. It's, it, it doesn't seem to hold water with the American people. And I'm guessing it doesn't really hold water with the press that's there as well, with the majority of them wondering why this simply can't be done. Well, call it optics, call it perception, call it imagery. Uh, the president does not look good when he's not on the scene at a time of a crisis. George W. Bush learned this the hard way. Uh, Bill Clinton and Ronald Reagan understood this. They were always there whenever there was a flood just to be the consoler in chief. Uh, president Obama has not learned that, but I have a feeling he will in a short time. In any event, the press certainly feels that way, and uh, one can only sense that just simply by sitting in the James Brady briefing room. Is there any sense what will come this week? Because certainly now the president is going to have a chance to talk with Congress, and he's going to push his $2 billion needed to uh, help uh, alleviate what is happening in the border between America and Mexico right now. Is there any sense of what will happen between the two sides now as they start to hammer this out? Well. Uh, I would say Republicans on the Hill, and certainly Bob Goodlatte, the chairman of the House Judiciary Committee, believe that the situation on the border now makes a strong case for the argument they've made all along. Secure the border. Have border security first, and then deal with the other problems that are involved in the immigration crisis. In other words, get the most critical matter out of the way, something that's as dramatic as tomorrow's headlines, and then incrementally deal with the others, not just try to do it comprehensively, as the White House has long insisted. Uh, let's talk a little bit about spying in Germany, because uh, we thought perhaps that this might have uh, gone away or at least been uh, silenced for a little while, but now there seems to be more discussion about how much again talking to Chancellor Merkel. Where is this all now, and, and what's the, the storyline running here between uh, Germany, America, and a little more spying? President Obama did have a conversation with Chancellor Merkel on Thursday, uh, according to Press Secretary Josh Earnest. On Friday, there were published reports of even greater spying in Germany, uh, which Mr. Earnest called today 
but an incredibly important ally of the United States. I've certainly seen the last meeting when Chancellor Merkel was out in the Rose Garden with President Obama and then did their utmost to say that the revelations of Edward Snowden were behind them and they were moving along. I have a feeling they may have to do a makeover on this or a do-over sooner rather than later. Let's head from Mississippi now in the, uh, <laughs> the fight that's going on now. Chris McDaniel does not seem to be willing to back down at all in his fight against Thad Cochran. No, he isn't. And uh, I talked to his spokesman at length on Thursday, Noel Fritch, who said that they have come up with nearly 5,000 irregularities. That is, people who voted in the Democratic primary and then came over to vote in the Republican runoff, which is against the law in the Magnolia State. Uh, Senator Cochran was nominated by an unofficial 6,700 votes. Uh, and Senator McDaniel, State Senator McDaniel, has yet to concede. What his spokesman said he wants is for courts to look at a fraudulent election and order a new primary. The problem with this is it's not as easy as it sounds and history is against it. In most cases, going back to Lyndon Johnson's win of by 87 votes out of 900 some thousand cast in 1948, first won the Democratic primary for the U.S. Senate in Texas, courts generally say a party primary is the business of a private entity, a political party. It's not a general election. The secretaries of state don't want to touch it, and they usually say they're not going to avoid results of primary and certainly not order a new election. I'd have to say that Mr. McDaniel has a tall order ahead of him, and I speak as a student of history. And a student of history will take that every single time and twice on Sunday. Mr. Gizzy, always a pleasure. Or I should say, John, I know that Mr. Gizzy, of course, we've already gone well past that. So, John, thank Sir, you. Sir, that's my father, and he's 93. It's the same thing. You and I are from the, that, that generation where if you say, Mr. Berliner, I go, is my dad here? Always happens. <laughs> it's exactly the same thing. John, always a pleasure, my friend. We'll talk to you again later on this week. I'm looking forward to it. Take care. All right, take care. And a reminder again, don't forget to catch what John Gizzy has got to say on the Newsmax website, themothershipnewsmax.com. You can read all of his columns there as well. And then John joins us a couple of times a week, tells us what's happening inside the Beltway. Uh, yeah, and by the way, John Boehner, when the president said so sue me about John Boehner suing him, uh, John Boehner is fired back saying that the comments are utterly beneath the dignity of the office. And the beat goes on inside the Beltway. Stick around. We're right back with more right here on Midpoint, where every day we question everything.